Saint Oblivienne, Saint Sebastian Gadal. I'm very happy to be here. And Sergei, I would like to thanks to you to invite me. I am not in your in your community. I am geographer. I'm working in uh, in geoscience, mostly in IT technologies applied to the geography. And for today, in fact, I would like to explain you that the geographer we are in fact in the both side. When the side that in fact we have uh, end users about um, the models of the programs that you are developing. And in fact, when the in the in the middle of this way, and for today, I would like, in fact, to present you some key issues that you are developing with my colleagues from the Northeastern Federal University, but also with some colleagues from the US, about the development of some uh, new model to try, in fact, and to modeling the transformations of Yakuts, but also some of the transformations of uh, Russian Arctic. And I would like to show you some examples, and maybe to open some, some discussions. And for us, in geography, we are working mostly about the geographical ontologies, and for the geographical ontologies, after we are going, in fact, to, to work with some colleagues in, uh, in informatics, in mathematics, in fact, to develop some new models. And of course, all your advice, all your comments are, are welcome. So this is why I came here. So first of all, <coughs> in uh, geography, when uh, we are working about uh, the questions of uh, the use of modeling, and uh, artificial intelligence. In fact, we are, we are using that, in fact, on uh, three ways, on three aspects. The first way is to develop, in fact, and some method of uh, modelization support and the transformations of the territories. The second way, and especially in mass processing, we have some very big users, in fact, on some basic algorithm that, that everybody is using because they were developed more than 20 years ago about uh, the SVMs and the neural network and the Markov chain. So we have a very large types of algorithm as an user, we are going, in fact, to combine and to chain all this algorithm, in fact, to extract some information. And we are here, for example, about, uh, we try, in fact, here to automatize and some process for here from the ISPR spectral imagery. You have to understand that here we have some uh, imagery that we have some several terabytes. And from this one, we are going, in fact, to generate some uh, knowledge uh, database about the different types of vegetation in the urban vegetation, and to apply, in fact, some machine learning to extract and to mapping automatically, in fact, and very different kind of land covers in the urban environment. And it's quite complex because the urban environment is complex. In the second way, to explain in terms of modeling is, for example, on Yakutsk, we are trying, in fact, to modeling, in fact, on the futures of development. I don't know if it's working here. No, it's not coming. Ah, simulation is not working here in this one. So I'm very sorry. It's not working, but you have to understand from this way, in fact, we are modeling in the same terms and the transformations of the cities, but as well in the case where we are, in fact, under global warming of 1.5 degrees. I don't know if it's coming back or not. We have some problem of softwares. So I'm trying, in fact, um, then to develop and some model about all the cultures and to try, in fact, and to understand and the transformations and the adaptations. So what's happening in the case where we are, in fact, in the greens of population, in case we are going, in fact, and to build the bridge in the ways of the global warming. Because in the global warming, we have, in fact, the transformations of land covers, of vegetation, and we are modeling and, and making some simulations about all the territory. And now we try to extend these types of modeling, in fact, into a YAML and to try, in fact, and to develop uh, some scenarios. So it's, it's by this way that the geographers are very interesting, in fact, and to use all these types of modeling that you are developing, the types of algorithms, so the types of modeling. The second way, <coughs> how is the interaction that we have between uh, the people that they are working in IAS and the geographer and myself? In fact, we are developing some modeling, in fact, to try to integrate the expert knowledge, who is in the knowledge of local people, who is in the knowledge that we have about the territory, about the global warming in terms of perceptions. And the ways is after when we are integrating all this information from the database, we integrate all these types say, say of knowledge in the algorithm to extract from the satellite image and the knowledge and, and the perceptions of the people. And we finish the last uh, June, in fact, uh, this research and this approach, and we hope for the next years and to have some publications about that. The last way, this is a key issues, is how we can to making and formalizations about the perceptions and the knowledge of the people in terms of database and how is in fact to integrate on the modeling. And for this one, 
for myself is one of my work, is what on rings, and we are working mostly in terms of ontologies, in terms of geographical ontologies, on spatial ontologies, to try, in fact, to characterize and to describe and the uh, than the geographical space and the uh, territory. And actually, we have three entrants. First entrance is to develop, in fact, some metrics, some topologies about the geographical object and to see how we can, in fact, extract it. And we are working a lot in terms of topology. We are working a lot in terms of mirror topology. We are working a lot in terms of uh, what I show you the later about uh, some of the symbolic recognitions, so the geographical object. But as well, we are using, in fact, um, the biophysical characteristic that we can, in fact, uh, to measure from the satellite image in terms of radiometry, of spectrum, in terms of, and we are generating some very large spectral database of several terabytes, and we trained, in fact, to make the links between the spectral and signatures and the types of objects that we can start to detect. The last aspect is what uh, we are working quite with quite uh, some good success with the Russian Academies of Science and the Russian from Russia, but the development of links between the geolinguistic, in terms of geolinguistic, how then you are talking, how you are representing the space, how you are nominating uh, the geographical object and the landscape, and we are making, in fact, a comparative analysis, especially in Yakutia, between the Russian, between the Yakutsk and the Tungus, and some terms of language, and we try then to understand, in fact, how is the perception of that, and by this way, we integrate all this large database of geolinguistics in the algorithm to try to extract from remote sensing the data. It's one of the way what uh, we are doing. So, the main problems that we have when we are working in remote sensing and for today is that now we have uh, very large numbers of uh, Earth observations and satellites. And we have a lot of uh, terabytes of data, like of sensors. And the way is how to combine all this data, all the sources, is one of the way. The second way <coughs> is to try, in fact, because now we've, uh, we have the new things, it is the coming of uh, high temporality, so the process. Because you have to understand that still 10 years ago, we got some data each month, each two months. And now, with a satellite or with a drone, we can have, in fact, in the data every 10, 15 minutes. And we have, in fact, and to work and to apply and to develop, in fact, and some method in terms of massive data to process automatically all the data. The second way, of course, is in the question is sake of storage. But as well, and in terms of computing, one kind, in fact, of computers and we have, in fact, and to develop and all this aspect. And the other way, this is the complexity so the method that we have, in fact, and to develop in terms of processing, in, in terms of treatment. And the way <coughs> that we choose for us is to generate some database. And from this database, we are going, in fact, to extract the knowledge from the satellite image. This is the approach and what we have. And we recombine, in fact, and the problematic sake of the knowledge, how to build the knowledge, how to extract the knowledge. And the second way is to generate, in fact, some rules in terms like, of uh, spatial ontologies. That is the approach where we are. If you try, <coughs> in fact, to generate and the mapping about the result, us, in geography, we can to separate two approaches. The approach about what uh, and the communities of ITs, of mathematics, and people we are working in programming than we are making in terms of uh, algorithm, in terms of model, and the way where we are us as geographers. And for us, and the most important, if we have to have some success in terms of development of simulations, is to develop here some model of knowledge about the territories, about the spatial dynamic, about and the population, how we are living, but also as well in terms of arrangement and climate change, to generate some geographical ontologies. One part of this way, of course, is, is made by the classical approach when we are going to expedition, when we are generating them some map, when we are going to integrate some the knowledge of local populations. For example, in the Arctic, how the people, what kind of perceptions the people ha must, must have. But as well, also, in terms of semantic, is one of the most promising uh, approach that we have, actually, in terms of geolinguistic, but as well in terms of definitions of the object in terms of ontologies. And from this one, 
we are generating, in fact, and some specific database about the knowledge of the experience of the people. Our is to your language. Our is to your environment, sake of living, is one of the ways where, the where we are. And from this one, we can then generate, in fact, and some landscape of identification. The second approach is more physical. It's about uh, the bottom of the measurement of the remote sensing image, where we are going, in fact, to generate a large database of spectral signatures of the object. And the second way, by this way, we can start to detect the object. And the next one, in terms of uh, morphology, is to try to characterize the morphologies of the object, one kind of geometries. And for this one, we are generating as well some very large database, sick of morphometric database, about the geographical, ob, ob, uh, about the geographical object. And the one where me, myself am working, this is on the limit in terms of borders. Because of the borders are giving us a lot of information. Then, then, for example, if we want to analyze the impact of a climate change, the impact of the global warming with my colleague of the Russian Academy of Science, we generate the first mapping of the biogeographies uh, the biogeography and the vegetations in the Arctic, for the Arctic Council. And for this one, I am working a lot about the definitions of the boundaries, of the limit. And for this one, we can to characterize and the impact of the global warming about the evolutions of the vegetations, and for example. And for this, all this aspect, we are generating some database. And this database, we are integrating, like uh, in, the, in this database, where we are generating, in fact, some learning ecosystem. But we are used after and integrate in, in uh, geographical information systems. And for this one, we are generating, in fact, some data, some processing, and we are using and the usual uh, algorithm that the world has developed in the last uh, 20s and 30 years to generate some spatial cartography, but also try to develop some new models of, uh, of simulations and to generate some scenarios of evolutions of the territory. And for this one now, about the scenario, we are proposing in fact, and some uh, kinds of planning and policy. One kind of policy we must implement according then, to the result of a scenario that we developed here. And it's possible only if we are integrated then the knowledge of the populations and the knowledge of the territory. That is one of the most important. So, for, then for this one, where we are? I'm just going back. Now, if we are using, in fact, and some automatic approach in terms of morphometric approach and for recognition of objects, we are able now to mapping automatically, as in the very dense urban area, then the mapping about all the building. And according to the all the building, we can to characterize then, then for example, then the type of architecture when we were built and all these kind of things. But as well, according to this data, it's possible here to generate some specific maps that they showing the level of life of the people. Because we have some very strong links between the kind of morphology of the people and the lifestyles of populations. And this way we develop some model of level of life according to the results that come to extract in terms of morphology. The second way, so here we have some kinds of database. You have to understand that you are generating for each graphical object more than 54 to 60 types of geometry and to characterize each object. And after we are, what we are doing, we are generating some, uh, some rules where we combine some the integrations and everything. And this way, we can to extract the really different kinds of objects. Here, for example, we can to extract automatically all the church, because the church has a specific geometry, system, for example. In other way, here, we can to extract all the buildings that they were built in the interwar period. By this way, here we're going to extract all the reconstructions about all the seats of the buildings after the Second World War. So, by this way, from this generation of the morphometric database, we can to extract the different kinds of buildings. And from these buildings, and to make some of the links with some other knowledge database about the level of life of the populations. Another example, it's here. Now we have another way. We can have, in fact, some approach to try to characterize, in fact, the types of roof, the materials. Here we are, our satellite image, and automatically here we can start to generate, in fact, and some mapping, but we're showing the types of roofs and materials. And this one is possible because here we are generating some spectral 
database. And the spectral the database gives us the capability, in fact, to recognize each type of roof for the material that it, can be, that it can be linked, in fact, about the dates, the co-constructions, of the reconstructions, and all the suspects. And one of the way that we are developing. And if we are combining the spectral database with a morphometric than database, we can to extract some specific object according to the times where they are built. And here, for example, we have, in fact, in some buildings and from the 13th century. Here we can to extract some buildings that were made in the 15th century. And by this way, we are combining these both types of database. This is one of the examples that we have. Here, for example, we are developing some JS, so is in front of the story. We have a spectral the library that we, are, that we are generating and we integrate all the knowledge that we have from the GIS and from the spectral library. We are generating, in fact, in some classification and some segmentations. And we integrate at this level, in fact, uh, the geometry database that we extract. And for this one, we are able to extract automatically all the types of the buildings and that we want according to what we need. This is uh, one of the examples about what we are doing. And of course, after all, it's very easy. If we have, for example, then the census the database about the demographies and everything to make and the automatic links between the types of morphologies of a building with the level of lives of people, the types of lives of people, or the, of the categories of people, for example. And here you have to understand that we are working on the centimetric and satellite image and in IPR spectral. And each image here is, is a several terabyte. So the approach that is quite similar here, in fact, is what I should use and before is to detect, in fact, uh, the age of a building according to the history. The approach is it's similar, excepting that we are going, in, in fact, to integrate some new rules. And we are not extracting, in fact, the roof materials, but we are going, in fact, to extract here, in fact, the times and the age when the building were built. This one of this approach. The second when main way why you are very interesting than by Yakutsk is because in Yakutia we have some new problems in terms of the integration of the temporalities. Yakutsk, of course, has a process of uh, transformation from April to September and October. But in the same times, around Yakutsk in terms of environment, the landscape changing, moving every month. And we have, in fact, to combine the both ways of temporalities. And we try, in fact, and to use this approach, and we are using, in fact, and the European, the, the European satellite uh, Sentinel-2, because with Sentinel-2 now we can have then, some data every month on Yakutsk. And by the way, we are going, in fact, and to use and this method to extract, in fact, the both types of building, and the both types of building was in red and the building that we are built during the Soviet times. The same approach here, and by this way, we can, in fact, then to look and to analyze what's happening. And for example, here, this is a huge and a huge problem because here we are building the very some fancy district. But this district, where it built, is built, in fact, on the sand and the permafrost. And the exposure to the annual flooding is very high. And by this way, we can look and choose and to develop, in fact, uh, some kind uh, of approach and like that, try to extract the types of building. And according to a kind of buildings, of course, is what we are doing, what I explained to you then before. We have uh, high temporal satellite resolutions. Of course, we are, we are integrated with the knowledge, so the spectral the database, the multi data approach, the change detections, and the change generations. And of course, we can, in fact, and to generate some new uh, morphometry database with the rules, and to extract for each building, in fact, and the socioeconomical uh, use that is one of the most important things and for us as a geographer and to understand, in fact, the transformations of society and the territory. So it's one kind of example about what we are doing, about the identification of the zone where there are some change, because as well, one of the kind of things is we have, of course, the urban growth, sprawl, and extension, but as well, what is the most important, this is the process of identifications of reconstructions inside of the city. And it's what about we are modeling and we are, and we are recognizing. So it's what I talked to you and before, both in the zone and we have some test zone where we can, in fact, to detect a huge change in terms of uh, renovations uh, inside the city. So 
is another way. Some of the way, of course, one of the most important aspect in terms of accuracy of a model, this is the spatial resolution of a satellite image. With uh, Sentinel-2, we are, we are using, in fact, some satellite image of 10 meters by 10 meters. When we are using a spot image, like, like here, we are at 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter. Of course, we are not in the spatial resolution support on the drone image that we made in a spectral where we were at 70 centimeters or less. But by this way, as we are at this spatial resolution, we vote any external database like the census and everything, we are able uh, to detect the three types of socioeconomic uh, used. Only the this approach. We the residential, the state administrations, the garage, and the, and the storage. And for this one, we are using, as always, in fact, the morphospectral database. The second way, the industrial zone, the cultural uh, structures and the store. So we, by this way, generating the very large list, in fact, of interrelationship between the types of morphology, the types of uh, spectral database, and the social used or the economical used. It's one of the ways that we're doing. But of course, the efficiency, depending on the spatial resolution of your satellite image. For example, it's 1.5 meter, and if you're doing the same with Sentinel-2 at 10 meter by 10 meter, you see, of course, we are detecting more or less the same object. But of course, the gradient is more bigger. It's less thin in terms of cartography. But the results are the same. The results are the same, excepting that the cartography is less precise. That is one of the way. Of course, and the, when we are mapping, then this one, of course, we have an impact in terms of mapping accuracy. It's very clear. The second way, what we are very int interesting for us, is to understand that the land use change and the land cover change. And in fact, we are using, of course, as a, as a plain use and the usual standard uh, grid, like, like the SAM and the SVM, so nothing specific. And by this way, according to the satellite, we are able, according to the types of knowledge that we are integrating, then to analyze, in fact, and the, and, and the type of sequence transformations. And these types of sequence transformations are more accurate than the database of the local authorities has. It's more precise in the way. The second way, according to the algorithm, and this is why we are working with some colleagues in mathematics, in informatics, one kind of algorithm and we have in fact to use. If we are comparing the result with the sum of the SVM, of course, and the sum try in fact to generate and some larger transformation than the reality is showing it is. And for us, and the challenge is to find in fact and some uh, some colleagues and some laboratory where we are able to help us and to develop some more accurate algorithm to have some accurate result in terms of long cover change. This is the same things, in fact, and we are making some comparison between the different kinds of approach. And you see the huge difference that, that we can have. This is the good reality, this is not. And by this way, why the knowledge and database we are working more carefully than if you're using, in fact, in a simple uh, and this is why it means I am pushing, in fact, uh, and especially the board of the colleagues that are working at the uh, next Marsing University. We have a very huge team, both uh, from the different disciplines, both the, the people that are working in artificial intelligence. And for myself, I am pushing to work on, on the problematics of the knowledge and the ontologies. Because my colleagues from mathematics and my colleagues from informatics, they are developing some very and so, very and complex algorithm. But when we are using it, so the results are less good than when we are using and when we are integrating and modeling and the knowledge that we can generate from satellite image or from the populations. And here we have the same types of result, sent to showing, in fact, an impact. I know it's interesting, but if here, this is uh, the kind of method that uh, we develop with, with my team, when, in fact, we are going, in fact, and to use only the spectral library. And the spectral libraries that we are making, in fact, a comparative analysis in terms of the spectral library between, first of all, the library that we are generating from the satellite image and the library that we are generating in the lab. We are taking all the materials, all the vegetations on the land field, and we are generating some large database in the lab. And we are comparing the both approach and the both results. 
and what we discover, but in reality, the results are more accurate actually when we are working and when we are generating the database from the satellite image than in the lab. And we are quite surprised because in the labs and the conditions of generation of the database are very good, are very strong. But in fact, and it was the same problems that my colleagues from the ONERA in Toulouse had, in fact, we discovered that we have, in fact, and the huge problems of how to combine the same level of spatial resolutions. And here, the spatial resolution is it's some centimeters. Here, we can be that 10 meters by 10 meters, or 1 meter by 1 meter, or 70 centimeters by centimeter. And in fact, as here is more precise, how we have some measurement from angle at some centimeters, a very precise and spectral database, we have, in fact, to solve and the problems of the spatial resolutions. And this, and this discordance that we get in both now, in fact, and the only has then developed some new algorithm, in fact, and to generate and some simulating uh, spectral database to have, in, in fact, the accurate approach. It's one of the main points that I would like, in fact, uh, to tell you. And for this one, of course, we are combining, after all, the both kind of database to to try, in fact, to extract uh, the object. Some result. Best results are made uh, in Lithuania, in Kaunas, because in Kaunas we have uh, European uh, facilities. And by this way, we try to extract as the same ways, in fact, and the, and the vegetation from the usual satellite, like Landsat, like, like Sentinel, and to try to automatize, in fact, the process of mapping according to the season and, and according to the algorithm and to compare the result in terms of hot wood, in terms of conifer, in terms of grass. Of course, and the results are much better as, uh, as usual with uh, SVM. And here, if you are working with uh, hyperspectral imagery, we are able to detect until 50 types of species of vegetation. So, and one of the ways is, uh, the hyperspectral is one of the ways where we are focusing. And by this way, we are able, in fact, to mapping with a level of accuracy and detection of the types of species. So, the results I explain you are so-so because we made some error in terms of the buildings of a spectral uh, and database in terms of accuracy between both. This is, of course, when you are using some more kinds of algorithm, some between, and here we have some very average send result. They are not so good. Yes, they are not so good. They are very wrong and in reality. They are wrong in comparing them to the technologies and comparing them to the approaches. Just because when we are making some error in terms of buildings of a database, we are generating the best level of errors. This is why the knowledge of the buildings of a database is fundamental. This is the key point. Some of the approach that I would like to show you that, you are, that I'm doing in Yakutia with my colleagues from Nefu. We are generating, according to the Yakuz, to the Russian, to the Tungus, some very, very large database of several uh, thousand entrants with my colleagues from the Department of Linguistics and everything. And the way we are making some links about the signification in terms of geography, in terms of object, and we are comparing them this way. Yeah, we are generating that as database, but we are integrating in JS. We are making, in fact, some links with the topographic maps and to try then, then to inter and to interpolate and the links that we have in terms of the database and the topographic reality and the relief. But as well, with the localizations of the populations. And by this way, we are generating automatically, in fact, some mapping according, in fact, <coughs> about one kind of use and the people they have, and if they are Russian, if they are Yakuz, Yakut, if they are and by this way, we map all the large part also of the Arctic regions. And, we sh and we're showing, in fact, the influence of the language about the representation, but as well about the use of, uh, of the landscape. It's one of the interests that we have. Another approach that we developed with uh, Evenk, with Evenki, it was the same approach. I use and I take in all the Evenki language. And by this way, I'm sorry, it's, it's in French, but going to translate you. The event, we are talking in terms of physical geography. We are talking, in, in, in fact, of the top of the mountain, so the plateau, of the going down, the bottom of the altitude, because for the renders, for the renders, it's very important to have these types of information. And by this way, from this one, from the satellite image, we are able to extract the need of the event, 
one kind of plateau, one kind of altitude, where we have where to go. But as well, what is much more interesting for us is to generate, I come back, is to generate, in fact, some kind of biogeographies and, and types of landscape. Because according to the landscape, we are using the landscapes for the hunting. We are using the landscapes and to take some berries and everything. So we made all this process. And according to the language of Evenk, we are able, in fact, and to generate and the landscape use for the event. And this landscape use is automatically recognized on the satellite image. And one of the approach that we developed with them, so he's missing one image, I don't know why, um, we developed, in fact, for them some uh, decision-making tools in terms of mapping, because for them, what is the most important for the rangers? To have some new grass. And for this one, we made, and we're making the mapping of the five forests. Where there are the five forests? And for the five forests of the next year that they are coming with the rangers, because the grass is very good. And for this one, in fact, we are generating some specific types of mapping like that with less colors. Because the colors that we're using in France, the event, don't understand that. But if you are using these types of projections with them, and these types of colors, we are making immediately the links with localizations. And we don't need any GPS and nothing. We know exactly where it is and where we have to go for the next year for the renders. It's one of the approach that we developed about the use of a geolinguistic database that we're integrating in the system. This is the end. <laughs> so here you can find, in fact, uh, some articles that we publish. Of course, we have some new ones. We are coming for, 2000, for the next year. And if you are interested to join us and to help us in terms of algorithm, in terms of development of new algorithm and processing, of course, you are welcome. Because in geography, as I told you, we are some end user, but uh, we are always pushing my colleagues in uh, programming in, in computer science to the limits about what we can do. So thank you very much. And I'm ready if, if you have uh, any questions, uh, then you are welcome. Thanks, Paul. Есть у кого-нибудь вопросы? Ah, what kind of metric? I'm using uh, mostly of times two types of metrics on the database. First metric, this is the usual uh, Euclidean symmetric, like the you know, like uh, like the IRA, like the elongations, but also the question of of connexity all the metrics of the topology, and we are mixing them with both metrics. So if you want, I can sort of show you after the, the, the types of database that you are generating. And it was some method that I developed uh, more than 20 years ago in my PhD. So it's not new, but we upgraded some of this approach. And now we have some sufficient uh, capacities of calculus. Because during my PhD, I was able to, uh, to do what? In some... Uh, urban district of two threes and kilometer by two threes and kilometer, but now with the processing, we are able uh, to enlarge some very large territories. This is just an equation of uh, processing. And that's the way. But the base, you can find it uh, on the website because we have my PhD, you have some articles, and you have all the database that I'm using. But mostly of times as well, uh, of course, in terms of uh, Euclidians, you can work with some satellite image of 10 meters by 10 meters, of 15 centimeters by 50 centimeters without any effect. But the, but the, the topology with the connexity, with the gap, with the wall, and all this way are very efficient when you are working with some satellite image under and the meter. So I cannot uh, explain you because I'm not a mathematician, but this is uh, some question of a multi level uh, ap ap uh, approach. <laughs> So then thank you very much and uh, special.